DeepSeek recently released their new model, which is DeepSeek V2.5. This is a lot cheaper. As you can see, they're just literally charging you in cents for more than 1 million tokens and with the 128k context ramp. But if you scroll down on the website, you can see the benchmark. And as you can see, it outperforms all of the model out there, like GPT-4 Turbo, DeepSeek V2 as well, their previous model. And I have personally tested DeepSeek V2, but I personally think these might be just biased benchmarks. So why don't we test it out and see whether it outperforms GPT-4 or Turbo and Cloud3 Sonnet, or are these just numbers for show? So let's actually go and actually evaluate using some benchmark questions that I've come up with. We're gonna test this out with 12 benchmark questions and I have the correct answers for all of these benchmark questions. We're gonna test this out on the DeepSea web app and see whether they pass the test or not. And after testing all of these, I'm gonna go on and give my personal honest view about DeepSeek V2.5. Now I've composed these benchmarks. The first eight questions are gonna be word problems, mathematical questions, physics and numerical problems, and even general reasoning questions. But the last four questions are related to programming because, because DeepSeek actually claims that DeepSeek V2.5 specializes in math, code, and reasoning. So we're gonna test these three areas today. We're gonna check out whether their claims are accurate or not. But before diving in, I wanna show you where to get DeepSeek V2.5. So if you go to the DeepSeek hugging face, you can see that they have dumped their V2.5 here. It is completely open source and you can use it. And they have their benchmarks placed here, which claim that it is actually better than DeepSeek V2 and DeepSeek Coder V2. And the interesting part is, DeepSeek V2.5 is an upgraded version that combines DeepSeek V2 chat and DeepSeek Coder V2 instruct, which means that you can get the coding capabilities as well as the DeepSeek V2 generative chat model capabilities. And one more authentic source from where you can actually get this locally on your machine is Olama library. And you can easily install this from here. But in this video, we're not gonna go on and locally install this, but actually go to the DeepSeek web app which is gonna look something like this here. So without further ado, let's dive right into the video and actually test this amazing model using our benchmarks and see whether their claims are accurate or not. Hi and welcome back to Skill Curve. This is your host Shamriz and we're finally getting into the testing part of DeepSeek V2.5. Now, as I told you earlier, I have this table of benchmark questions that I'm going to use to test the capabilities of this amazing LLM that just got released. And I have around 12 questions here. So I'm going to go and start with the very first question here, which is going to be a reasoning question. So let's just copy the question and then I can explain the question later on. And these are the correct answers that we should expect. And any answer other than these is going to be considered wrong and we're going to mark this as a fail. So let's go and paste that right here. So the question is about a man looking at a photograph of someone. His friend asks, who is it you're looking at? The man replies, brothers and sisters, I have none, but that man's father is my father's son. So the LLM has to find out who is in the photograph. This is quite complex riddle. I don't think so that we're gonna get the correct answer here, but let's go and check out. And there you go, the answer is, the man in the photograph is the son of the man looking at the photograph. So if we go back to our benchmarks, yes, the answer was right. And I'm really amazed at the capabilities of DeepSeek V2.5. So let's go and mark this as a pass. The next question is going to be a series sequence question. This is quite a simple question. Let's just copy this. I'm going to go back here. Let's clear the context. I'm just going to paste out here. And there's a series sequence and we need to find which is the next number in the series. So let's go and send. So there you go. The answer is 52. But if we go back to our benchmarks, the answer should be 42. Which means that this one is a bummer and a fail. So let's mark that as a fail. Let's move to the next question. It's going to be again a word problem. So let's copy all of this. Let's go back to deep -seek coder, clear the context. And back here at DeepSeek. Let's just paste that. So the question goes like, you have nine balls and a balance scale. One of the balls is heavier than the others. What is the minimum number of weighings required to find the heavier ball? So, yep, let's go and check out the result. So the conclusion is two weighings are required. So if I go back to my benchmark, I can see that, yes, we need two weighings, which is written right here. So yes, this is a pass. So the next question, is again gonna be a numerical type question. 
some calculations. Let's paste that here. A train leaves station at 7 a.m. traveling at 60 miles per hour. Another train leaves station B at 8 a.m. traveling at 80 miles per hour towards station A. The distance between two stations is 300 miles. At what time do the two trains meet? So this is more like a numerical problem and I'm really excited to check out whether we get the correct answer or not. So let's send this here. And as you can see, DeepSeek V2.5 actually goes step by step into the problem, solve one step at a time and then drives out the conclusion, which is really mind blowing. And there you go, the answer is the two trains meet at approximately 9.43 a.m. But if we go back to the benchmarks, it says that it's going to take it 1 hour and 43 minutes from 8 a.m., which is exactly 9.43 a.m. This is a pass again. The next one is also going to be a mathematical numerical problem. So let's just copy the question. I'm just going to go back, clear the context here, and let's paste that here. So the question goes like, a car travels from city A to city B, a distance of 180 miles at an average speed of 60 miles per hour. How long does the trip take? So let's go and send the question. Now the answer should be three hours here. So let's go and check out the results. And yes, it takes three hours. This one is a pass again. Wow, I'm really amazed at this. So it passes four out of five benchmarks. So I'm really excited about the coding benchmarks later in the video, but let's go and go with the sixth one here, which is going to be a mathematical problem. So let's go and copy the question. I'm going to clear the context. So this time you have five people contributing to a total of $150 to a fund such that each person contributes $10 more than the previous one. How much does each person contribute? So let's go and check out the results. And the correct answer for this one should be the first person contributes $10, then $20, 30 40 and the last person contributes $50. So let's go and check out the result here. And there you go. It did produce a correct answer, which is really mind-blowing. Like, it's going step by step, doing each step thoroughly, and it is really easy to understand what it's actually doing. And I personally think that this is one of the most amazing models that I've tested so far. So let's go and mark this as a pass. Let's go with the general reason questions here. So I'm just going to go and copy that. I'm going to paste right here. It's about John, who is twice as old as Mary, was 10 years ago. If Mary is 25 years old now, how old is John? So it's a word problem. Let's go and check out the result. The result should be 30 years old, but let's see. And yup, it did produce 30 years old right here. Let's go and mark that as a pass again. Now for the last reasoning question that we have is a car that accelerates from rest at a constant acceleration of 5 meter per second square. How far does it travel in 8 seconds? So this is more like a physics numeric question. So let's just copy this. I'm going to go and clear the context and paste this right here. Let's send this. The answer should be 160 meter. And yup, it is 160 meter. Now in reasoning, I think there has never been a more accurate model than this one because it passed seven benchmarks out of eight, which is more than 95% success rate. But now is the crucial part because we're going to test out its coding capabilities as they claim that the DeepSeek V2.5 is actually a mixture of DeepSeek 2.0 and DeepSeek Coder 2.0. And they just mixed up both of these models and produced this amazing all-purpose model. So I want to see how good it actually is in programming. So I'm just going to go and copy this benchmark. I'm going to clear the context. Let's paste this right here. So this time we're going to create a Python function to calculate the factorial of a number. Quite a simple program and I think this should work, but we're going to go from basic to more complex problems later on. So let's send this here. And the results are out. Let's go and copy the code from here and let's go back to my VS code and I actually want to test this code. So let's save that and run that here. So yep, the factorial of five is 120. We can actually change this value and see if it's still working. So I want to change this number to six. So let's go and save that again and run this again. And yep, it is actually working, which is great. It actually passed the first coding benchmark. So back here in the benchmark table, I'm just gonna mark this as a pass. Let's go with the next, which is a bit more complex because we want to check whether this thing is a palindrome or not. So let's just copy this. 
and let's go back to our DeepSeq v2.5. I'm just going to go paste this right here. Let's send this. Now, for those of you who don't know what a palindrome is, it's like a string that spells the same if we read it forward or backward. So let's go and copy the code. Back here in my VS code, I'm just going to replace this code. Save this and let's run this. So let's go and enter a string. So first I'm going to enter a string which is not a palindrome. So I'm just going to go and say skill curve. And yes, this is not a palindrome. But if I run this again and if I say madam, it is a palindrome because if we spell this backwards, it still means the same and spells the same M-A-D-E-M. So let's go and hit enter. And yes, this string is a palindrome. So yeah, this was a bit more complex code, but still DeepSeq v2.5 passed this test. It's literally clearing all the benchmarks. Test this out. I'm going to clear this and paste it here. So this time we're going to create a simple to-do list web page using HTML and JavaScript, where users can add tasks, mark them as completed and delete tasks. So let's just send this. So the code is here. Let's go and copy the HTML code first. Back here in my editor, I'm just going to go and paste that right here. Let's save the file. As for the JavaScript code, I'm going to paste that right here in the script.js file. Let's copy the JavaScript code. Paste it right here. Save this. And now let's actually go and run this index.html file. So this is how our simple to-do list app should look like. So I'm just going to go and say whatever. Add a task. Can the market complete? Yes, we can. Can we delete it? Yes, we can. And yep, it is actually working. Although the styles are not that good because our focus was not on styling, but rather on the functionality. And DeepSeek just outperformed all of the models out there because most of the models that I've tested have given errors in the first iteration at least. So let's just mark this as a pass. And as for the last one, let's just copy this. So this time it's going to be a calculator. Let's see if it actually works. So the results are out and I'm just going to go and copy the HTML code here. Paste that right here. Save that. As for the styles, then I'm going to go and copy the CSS. Paste that here. Save. Last but certainly not least, the JavaScript code. And there you go. Now our code is all set. Let's actually run this. So there you go. This is the simple calculator that we have. So what if I do addition? Yep, it is working. I really like the design and CSS around it. And it did all of this in a simple prompt that we just gave to DeepSeq v2.5. And this is the result. But what if I want to subtract something? So I'm just going to go and subtract 20 and 5. And there is no result. I think there is something messed up with the subtraction. But let's try out our multiplication. So, yep, it is working. Now, what about division? So if I divide 105 by 5, what is the output? Oops, I think there are really small bugs in the JavaScript code, but overall the HTML is really great. The CSS is great, but we're going to go on and mark this as a fail because it was not a complete success. But all in all, DeepSeq v2.5 actually passed 10 out of 12 benchmarks, which is more like approximately 92% of the benchmarks that it actually cleared. And so far, I've tested so many models. I have tested DeepSeq Coder v2.2 as well. But I think this is the best so far that they have released. And I suggest if you're looking to host any local model, this one is for you because this is open source. And if you use the API, it's quite cheap. And for those of you who are looking for a local install, let me know in the comments below and I will make a video of the local install of DeepSeq v2.5 on your local machine and how you can set this up inside VS Code and make this into an AI pair programming tool. So with that said, that wraps up our video for today. I hope this video was valuable. If you found this video insightful, hit the like button. Share your thoughts and experiences in the comments below. Ring that notification bell to never miss out on our daily updates. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in our next video. Till then, stay curious and keep exploring.